I have been here a few times before, but um, it's my first time here doing promo, doing interviews, and uh, hopefully on this side of the year we'll come back and do a show here. That's what we what we aiming for. And no, uh, I for sure did not expect it. I was hoping for it, um, uh, but it, this was always meant to be a Danish movie uh, with English songs. I've always written my songs in English, and I've been an artist for 10 years, and I jumped into this acting thing almost by coincidence. Uh, the director came to me, it's three years ago now, and asked me if I wanted to play the lead role in his next film, and I just, I said yes right away, um, but in my head I was like, fuck, how am I going to do this, you know? <laughs> so it was, a, it was a, a, a bit of a struggle and a really scary creative process for me because I was, I was out of my league in many ways. This was a big Netflix production, and the, here I was standing in the middle as the, the main role, not knowing what what I was really getting myself into or doing in, in certain situations, so uh, definitely didn't expect it. But my God, to see it blow up like that and go number one in so many countries was just amazing, absolutely amazing. It was like eight months of preparation, and I was trying to figure out who this character was, Elliot Winter, while the script was being written almost. And this role was being written for me. And um, there was a few things that I really insisted on with this character. For example, that he had this little comic relief uh, thing. Or at least that he was not super depressed all the time, you know. Um, but he comes from like a really hardcore background. His parents died when he was very young. And they grew up. Uh, and when we meet him in the film, he's in this very sort of lost place super confused he has this hidden talent that he does not really know what to do with and um yeah it was a it was a process of getting to know this character again had no experience with acting so i had to go full-on method acting and just becoming this guy um a lot i would say actually i felt like in the beginning i have nothing in common with this guy but especially after the movie it feels a little bit like the movie came to life, you know, it almost became real. And we, we came straight from Spain and uh, I played my first shows ever in Spain, in Barcelona and Madrid. And people are, are screaming these lyrics and these songs back to me. And uh, it's almost like the movie, yeah, just became real life. And right now I'm, I'm looking into a world tour. We're going to Latin America and Asia. We're playing all over Europe. and. Uh, I have two daughters at home, and uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be gone for a long time, you know. So uh, it definitely takes some sacrifices, and uh, that's a part of uh, the job. And I've, I've known that because I've been an artist for ten years. But this is a different, different scale, and I think um, there's a lot of things I don't have in common with Elliot. But, but the journey of like going from zero to a hundred real quick. Yeah, we have definitely have that in common, and then of course the the, the passion for music, which is uh, which everything is, is rooted in. I don't feel like I have uh, had a similar case like that. Obviously, as you grow older, you um, you sort of realize that you are just the sum of the people you surround yourself with. So you want to surround yourself with good people, and also when you're young you can have like 10 20 best friends i feel like the older you get you sort of got you sort of narrow it down to the core of the people that you really want to spend your time with and i've been forced to do that as well um but it's very very hard i'm as a person i'm such a i wouldn't say afraid of conflicts but you know breaking up with a friend like that it's something that i would find so hard to do and i feel like i have a lot of people in my life where we're not best friends, but we're still friends and we still see each other just because, you know, you know, it is what it is, you know. Making the soundtrack was a completely different story for me because I'm really used to being in the studio, I'm used to writing songs, I'm used to being a part of that part of the process. And it was a lot of fun actually to write from Elliot's perspective and not my own perspective. And also, I've for 10 years I've written songs on the guitar. So it felt fresh and it felt new and it felt like coming home. It, there's a lot of my DNA in these songs. 
Uh, but to merge it with with Iliad and his story, and knowing that it's going to be represented on Netflix with this visual story behind it, was just it made it so much more meaningful. And there was a few things that I really wanted to focus on when writing the songs. Something that Iliad is facing in the movie as well is like why do why do we write songs and how how uh, what's the most important thing about writing songs and for me it's one of the most meaningful things is have, having someone to sing to and sing for and that became the whole concept of it it became almost the core of the movie and literally telling Elliot you know you have to find someone to sing for otherwise it doesn't make sense you, it doesn't exist um, and why would anyone relate to something if you don't really feel it you know so that was it was very cool and it was very cool that Stefan the script writer he managed to sort of put some of these lines from the music into the dialogue in the movie I, I really love that I think it's hope this song is for you I think it's the line if you have nothing to die for what are we even alive for and um, which pretty much sums up why he makes the decision to go on tour and to trust these people that he's never he's just met and it's because he, it's such a rare thing in this life to have something that you really are passionate about or even more rare to have a, like a real talent for something so when you find out that you know I could actually do this you just have to go and I'm such a big advocate for just taking a leap of faith and going for your dreams and that's the reason I'm on tour right now I, I could be home with my baby girls but I have this opportunity that I've been sort of I've been looking for it for 10 years and working hard for it and now it's here so I just have to I have to do it I have to do it and that's because I, I feel like I feel alive when I do it also I'll just die for music experiences like the ones we had the past two days in Barcelona Madrid where it's just magic and you create this space where it's like we really have someone to sing for then it all makes sense all the hard work you know so um yeah, I think it's hope the songs for you. A beautiful life was always the the song, you know. For me, it was always gonna be that cornerstone where it's like, "Baby, I'm pregnant." She said that line is just um, almost uh, iconic. Looking back at it now, because that was the only song we had before that was any script. <clears throat> so the whole uh, the whole script is sort of written around that song. Yeah, yeah, it was it was the beginning of everything, and ultimately became the title track. So, uh, a beautiful life, you know. <laughs> yeah, the the thing with the beautiful life, which I think is fun, is like we all want a beautiful life, but no one has the right answer to what is a beautiful life. It depends on like what is it to you, and uh, we are we're all just trying to find our way to a beautiful. A beautiful one so could could argue that that's the that's the one i know a few i mean i would say uh italian music is a specific thing and once in a while you have this italian artist people who pops up and it's like oh that's the thing now but uh i ha i haven't had a chance to listen to a lot I've, I've had a few vacations in italy when you visit the country uh, like that and you're here for a couple of weeks then you ultimately fall in love with the traditional when you go to the restaurant you fall in love with the traditional sounds and stuff um, but so I have a very romantic view on what Italian music is and uh, uh, I'm, I'm the first thing that comes to mind is, is Andrea Bocelli and uh, you know that sort of big big ro romantic uh, larger than life kind of music I am definitely coming. If not, I'm, there. I'm we're trying to work on a show in Milan here uh, in November, hopefully. But um, if I'm not coming in November, then definitely in the beginning of next year. I'm finishing my album while we're on tour now. And so there's an album coming out next year that I'm definitely going to tour. So.